Hey everybody, this is the Scotsman with Alabama Pipe Welders Academy. Just wanted to go over this basic review with you guys on TIG welding, GTAW process. It's a certification test review for the level one. So some of these points I'm gonna hit on, others are just gonna have to follow along and read. We give this to our guys about their first weekend after they've been welding for about a week. But TIG welding was originally called Heliart. That's because they originally used, called Heliart. That's because they used helium. And uh, you'll see the shielding gases here, but we'll come back to it. Uh, we moved through this pretty quick, so you're gonna have to follow along. If you could, if you got to pause the screen to to get a closer look, feel free. Today we use argon in our uh, for shielding gas. And uh, for you guys out there using 50 CFH, it's about 15 to 20 rule of thumb. So there is a thing called weld turbulence where you can have your CFH, your gas flow too high. So just keep that in mind. And one CFH equals about a half a L, uh, liter per minute. So if you're running, if your gauge is uh, liters, turn it down to about half of what you're using on CFH. And no, don't adjust your flow for overhead positions. Uh, the filler metal, we use a lot of different kinds and types of filler metal. The most all of them either have a little flag or a stamp. As you can see here in the picture, it'll say ER70 this, ER80, ER40, 43. It tells us a specific type and sometimes it'll even have the diameter of the uh, filler metal in there. And most common sizes are 1 16th, 332, 1 8th. And 532. All right, here we go. The 70S6 is carbon steel wire. ER stands for electro rod. 70 tensile strength. S solid wire. 6 chemical composition. You don't always have to use a uh, filler metal while you're welding. Sometimes you just fuse weld it. It's called ontogenous welding. And don't use oxy fuel welding wire in place of TIG wire. It's not the same. Fill of wire should be the same composition as the base metal. All right, now we're on to some tips with fill of wire while welding. The biggest one, while you're welding, don't pull the wire out of the gas coverage while you're dipping. Don't dip it, pull it out of the coverage because it oxidizes. In between welds, clip the end of the wire off. That big black end, clip it off before you start again. Looks like that. These clippers right here, Nipex brand, you got to get some. No clip 532 stainless wire like butter. Trust me, your hands will thank you later. This one right here is easy. For critical wells, you just want to keep that wire as clean as possible. Scotch bright off the oxides on the outside of the wire. Copper nickel, you can use acetone. If you get some wires got rust all over it, scotch bright it. All right, moving on. It's all about the tungsten, baby. Tungsten electrodes come in all shapes and sizes. Uh, the chemical symbol is W. Now we color coded this for the, for you guys. If you're colorblind, it's two percent is red. Green is pure tungsten. That's what you use for AC welding. Zirconated is brown and black is lanthionated the orange is seriated okay this next part if you go out on a job site and ask for tungsten they're gonna give you two percent thoriated it's radioactive the dust from it is toxic do not breathe it in if you go to this website it'll tell you all about it educate yourself learn this stuff is poisonous. You're twice as likely to have a stroke with tungsten in your bloodstream. You want a dust-free tungsten sharpener. They make them like this. They're fast. They're easy. They're dust-free. They make them cordless. Get one. They're only about a hundred dollars. Don't have a stroke. All right, moving on to AC versus DC welding. AC is alternating current. DC is direct current. AC current is mainly for aluminum and magnesium. You can see right here the AC tungsten is blunted, the DC has a sharp point. 
Darn AC welding, a ball, a shiny ball will form on the end of that tungsten. It's normal. You see right there in the picture. Now, for DC welding, the way you sharpen that tungsten will make a difference. It's proven, it's a fact. It affects your penetration and it also voltage. You get different volts. That's what, it, that's what penetration is, is volts. It shows it in this picture right here. You got to pause it, back up. All right, AC. This is the electron flow. It's back and forth, ions and electrons, back and forth. It's like what's coming out of your light switch at the house. DC current, direct current. Electrons going in one side and coming out the other. This is negative flow. Electrons are leaving the electrode, going into the work and coming back out. That's the flow process. All right, moving on to AC balance. This is how you control your cleaning and penetration with alternating current with AC TIG welding. The more positive a balance, the more clean in action and spread out that pedal's gonna be. The more negative the balance, the, more, the deeper penetration you're gonna have, the narrower the bead. High, free, high frequency helps maintain the arc. It also allows you to start without touching the tungsten to the work. All right, next we're gonna talk about is a pulse wave. This is what it looks like. You'll have on time and off time and time of a wave. So this is a pulse wave, so look closely. The reason we use pulse is so we can control the pool, the weld puddle. It means current is pulsing on and off to cool the puddle. All right, this next diagram is of a TIG torch and the functions and the parts and the pieces. I want you to take note of the shielding gas, how it comes in the handle and how it comes out the gas lens or gas nozzle You can see it right there. The next diagram coming up is of a torch head. It shows the collet, the collet body, the ceramic cup, the backing cap, everything. Just take a close look at the collet, how it fits in. This is the piece that tightens down on the tungsten to secure it in place. This stuff is on the test, so pay attention.